What's up everyone, my name is Guillaume, this is Thomas Guitars and Basses, and today we hit the tone on Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> What's up guys, hope you're all doing fantastic today and welcome to this new episode of Hear The Tone where I show you how to get the sounding and the play right on your favorite songs. So if you haven't done it yet, just put them in the comment section down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But today we are working on Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix, starting with the guitar. Jimi Hendrix was obviously the most famous user of Fender Stratocaster in the history of Fender Stratocaster users. So you've got a pretty wide array of choices there. I think that as long as you're looking at a you know standard single, single, single configuration, you'll be fine because you want to be playing in that neck pickup um, position. And ideally you'd have a maple fretboard on that guitar as well because there's a snappiness that comes with that wood compared to rosewood, for example, which is kind of hard to replicate otherwise. I went with that particular guitar, which I grabbed from the shop. It is incredible. This is a custom shop reissue of a 57 Stratocaster. So the year doesn't matter as much. I think that like Jimmy was famous for mostly using sort of mid 60s to late 60s guitars. He used some earlier ones, some late, you know, 50s uh, Fenders as well. So, you know, in that ballpark, there will be slight differences with the pickups in that kind of range, but honestly, nothing that you can't compensate with the amp or the pedals, which we're going to talk about just right now. And this is definitely the bulk of the work because Jimmy's sound was so massively loud and spanky and clear, but rich in the low end and unfortunately very not stock either. So he was using Marshall Super Lead amplifiers and Marshall uh, JTM45 mostly, and at least two or three of them at the same time with several 412 cabinets. So it's a big, big sound, it's a big amount of, of wattage and just raw power to emulate in kind of a, let's say, gigable, probably not bedroom friendly setup already. But his amps, as I was saying, were heavily modified, so the gain structure is always a little bit off if you're using anything that's stuck, except maybe for the new PRSHX um, 50 and 100 amps, which are really made to recreate that particular sound. But today I'm gonna to be using my trusty old Marshall Mark II Studio, which is a mini Plexi, fairly loud. Like this is not bedroom levels at all. This is gigable, this is every drummer, you know, you'll, you'll probably be on top of that. Uh, but I'll be using that amp because it's definitely the kind of right push, the kind of, of bottom end that I'm looking for while retaining a lot of that brilliance that makes up for Jimmy's sound. I'll be playing it through the Harley Benton uh, 212 cab with V30s. Again, that's a choice that is debatable. V30s are definitely not stuck in those vintage like Marshall cabs. Jimmy was using a blend of, of G12H and G12M speakers as far as I could find out. I think the V30s lend themselves pretty well to that because they have a very tight response in the high end while still retaining control over the bottom end. Uh, that's why they're mostly used for metal, for example, because of that precision. So I think that'll do just fine. And as far as the pedals go, not much on the board today except for the full tone Deja Vibe, uh, vibe <laughs> pedal, uh, which is a must for that song, a must for a lot of Jimmy's songs, to be honest. But that's the one that's going to be on for the whole intro, the whole song. Later on in that Band of Gypsies version comes a fuzz as well for the lead part, the final sort of explosion of guitaring that happens at the end of the song. But for the intro, you really just want to vibe either this one, which is a great vintage sort of inspired vibe. I'll put a link in the description box as well to a bunch of other recommendations. I'm going to be playing through the amp without the vibe so you can get an idea of the, uh, the EQ and everything, and then I'll kick the vibe in. <laughs> Thank you. 
you've seen the controls, everything was on there. Uh, the couple of things to keep in mind if you're using a different amp or a different pedal is that you really want that bottom end in the Marshall as well. That's something that was in Jimmy's sound, even though it always didn't always come through in the recording, uh, there was a lot of bottom end. So you really want to make sure you dial that in without you know, it coming completely out of hand and just uh, overtaking the sound. I also want to mention that we'll be using a room mic today to sort of emulate that reverb that you hear on most live versions of most renditions of that song. I could have used a reverb pedal in the loop of the amp, but I felt like it would have been like truer to the recordings with a room mic. If you don't have that option, just slap a plate reverb, say fairly low in the mix into the loop of your amplifier to sort of emulate that, that roominess that you have with that guitar sound. So that's for the amp and the pedal. The vibe is fairly quick. You've heard the tempo of the vibe just on the first like open string that I, that I played fairly quickly and you know, not too intense either. I'm just under 12 o'clock right now. It shouldn't again overtake sort of the clarity of the note because the intro is relatively fine, but then you're gonna be playing a whole lot of notes and a whole lot of lead parts uh, that are happening pretty fast. And if the vibe is too intense, it's just gonna take over and kind of remove the dynamics from that as well. So you want to avoid that. But with that said, I think this is a really great sound. I'm really happy with it. And I'm gonna go on to the final part of the video, which as usual is the most important and is how to play the tune. And as usual, the first thing to keep in mind for that song is the tuning, because today we are in D standard. That means a whole step down from your E standard tuned guitar. That is something that is very common for Jimmy, either D standard or E flat, rarely E standard, but it is a standard tuning. So just like your regular chord shapes, everything's still there. It's not that you know, confusing even if you're a beginner. And again, uh, although the tabs will be on the screen, they'll also be linked in the description box down below. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, the tabs mostly concern the main riff of that song. So that means that, you know, the main riff. The intro, I don't wanna put it in tabs because it's been improvised differently pretty much every time. And that's really up to your own interpretation. I'll just be doing a little bit of that, maybe at a slower pace to start you guys up with. And then the tabs will be on the screen for the main part of that riff. And it should look like that. And it's Jimmy, and it's Jimmy for a reason. Is is the most iconic guitar player of all time because all of his riffs are just such an incredible blend of of dynamics of lead parts and the way he incorporates lead parts into the main chord progressions. That is the quintessential Jimi Hendrix riff right there. So it's probably not um, you know beginner friendly really because mostly because of the phrasing there in terms of of like speed and everything except for the uh the machine gun the which is a pretty fast pace everything else is relatively slow the hardest part about that riff is really to get into that groove regardless of what your what your right hand is playing in the end because that tempo is just like a lot slower than that but to get into that and to phrase your lead parts according to that is the biggest challenge, at least to me it was, to get the feel right on that song or just any Jimmy song in general. So I think that's why improvising is gonna take a big role in that 
learning curve, I would say. Don't be afraid to just like set a tempo, play your E chord and just like on every one, you know, you hit the E chord and then you kind of improvise in the middle, do small lines like I've done in the introduction. And that will give you a sense of, of that tempo and how to get in the groove to phrase that riff right. But with that said, I think that's it, guys. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix. As usual, I hope that video was useful, and if so, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out on future episodes, because they very well could be about your favorite song. Just let me know in the comments, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, I wish you a fantastic week, and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit The Tone.